You know that feeling when you're trying to get an intuitive message, but you just can't quite discern what in the world your spirit guides are saying? Well, does that mean that you need to develop your intuition even more? Or should you get a reading from someone? And so that's what we're talking about today. When to get a psychic reading versus when to lean more heavily into your intuition. So stay tuned. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guide. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. We're here today with a brand new episode talking about when to get a psychic reading and when to trust your own inner guidance. But before we get started, I'm pulling a card from my Messenger of Spirit Oracle deck and the card is the Earth card. You are building a firm foundation, pay attention to the details, which is really perfect for our topic today. And that's the key. You want to continue to build your intuition always. And the more that you do, the more you will be able to pay attention to the details. But sometimes you feel like it's a vanilla message, like it's just bleh, that's what I say. And you're looking for a message from spirit with all the sprinkles and the details. And so sometimes you might want to get a reading from someone and that's completely valid as well. And by the way, if you've not heard, I have brought in two colleagues who are doing Zoom readings. And you can book your appointment with your reader over at messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments. I will put the link in the show notes. I've had a lot of people ask me for readings. I don't do live readings anymore, but I do have colleagues that have agreed to do readings and they have been doing this for years. So I'd love to see you book your reading if that's something that you're feeling called to do. So when do you get a reading? Well, let's actually first start with when to not get a reading. So you never, ever want to get a reading from someone when you feel like you are in a desperate place. This leads to looking for a specific outcome in a message. This can also lead to addiction to readings, which we do not want. And this is a real thing that does happen to some people. And if you're in a desperate place to get a message, to get a reading, you will not be truly open to what spirit has to say. So let's talk about it. If you feel like you have to get an answer, if you have to make a decision and you really want to know something. Oftentimes what you're doing when you're getting a reading is giving your power away. You're wanting someone else to make the decision for you. You wish that your spirit guides would give you a play by play. You wish that someone else could just kind of channel into your body and make the decision for you and leave. And while we might feel this way, and it's completely normal to feel this way sometimes, We don't want to give our power away. We want to be making decisions from an empowered place. So what you can do to flip that is if you do decide to get a reading and you need to make a decision and it feels like it is, oh my gosh, I need to know it right now kind of thing. Look at the reading as just information. This is just information for me to learn more about something. That's all it is. It's just information to learn more and then... I still will make my own decision from my own power. Sometimes people in a desperate place literally will make a decision from a psychic reading. Please do not do that. You need to make sure that you are making it from a place that you feel good and aligned with. Another reason that we don't want to do this is what I talked about earlier you're not going to be truly receptive to what spirit has to say. So sometimes people get a reading because they want to hear from a specific loved one. And if they are in a state of grief, if they are in a state of mourning and loss, and they do not hear from that loved one, 
that means they reject all the other messages and they are really being too narrow and they're not being open because they're still in a place that needs healing. When we are in a place where we are very, very emotionally charged, all those emotions are around us and serve as a barrier. And it can be hard to even understand the messages coming in for ourselves. That is really challenging when we are very emotionally charged. But also, we might be way too picky when it comes to a reading. And whenever someone would get a reading from me, I'd always say, you have to be open to everything spirit says. Spirit might be giving you messages about the past, the present, or the future, and any loved ones that come through. And sometimes loved ones would come through who were their great grandfather or great aunt or grandmother or dad. And the person would say to me, I don't want to talk to them. Or I never knew them. Can we move on to somebody else that I knew? And I'm just so hurt by it for the spirit because the spirit's like, you might not have known me, but I know you and I'm around you and I'm your family and I, I want to come through. And then sometimes there is a spirit who maybe did not have the best relationship with the person receiving the reading. And so the person receiving the reading doesn't want to hear from them, but they want to apologize or they want to say something. So it's really important that you remain open and that you are able to receive the messages that you don't give your power away and that you're not being too specific and really stuck on one outcome. So there are people out there who sometimes will get readings back to back by their favorite reader, or they will schedule readings with different mediums because they want the reading that will tell them what they want to hear. And so I always made a rule that said, you can only get one reading every four to six months because there's not enough stuff that has changed most of the time. And even when people would come back in four to six months, there would be maybe a message or two where they would say to me, you told me the same thing last time. I don't remember the messages and I would see so many different clients. There's no way for me to remember, but it's a great validation of great. I'm glad Spirit's telling you the same stuff. That's good validation. But also it's a validation that you want to make sure you have enough time away so that it's not the same reading over and over and over. So you've got to be able to detach from the outcome. You need to be in an open space to get a reading. When we come back after this quick break, I'm going to be talking about when to get a reading versus when to really rely on your intuition. So stay tuned. As a professional psychic medium, I've done tens of thousands of readings, but I felt a call to move more fully into teaching intuition, but I still get so many requests about doing readings. So while I don't do readings anymore, I have brought in some very trusted colleagues who are now available for live one-hour readings on Zoom. If you would like to book your psychic medium reading, go to messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments to see our available readers and schedule your Zoom reading today. Welcome back. We have been talking about when not to get a reading. But now let's talk about, well, when do you actually get a reading? Well, a great time to get a reading is on a birthday, an anniversary, a holiday, or around it. And one of the reasons is because your loved ones and spirit often come around you more naturally in that way. They're thinking about you, they're celebrating you, they're honoring you. So they like to come in and give a message of congratulations or happy birthday and those kind of things. So that's just a general rule. But a time to get a reading, it's a really good time when you are getting your own intuitive messages, but you feel like you could benefit from a different delivery. So you know when you tell somebody some advice and that person doesn't listen, this usually happens in families, and then someone completely unrelated to you tells them the same advice. And they think it is the best thing they've ever heard. And you're over here like, oh my gosh, like I told you that a million times and you didn't listen to me. Well, that's the same with readings. Maybe you wish that your own intuitive skill sets are more developed and that takes time and you can develop your details. You can develop details in readings and have more fluid conversations with spirit. 
but maybe you feel like, gosh, it would really benefit me to hear it in a different way. So your spirit guides could be telling you to rest. And then all of a sudden you get a reading and the reader channels the message and says to you, your spirit guides really feel like you need to rest because what's coming up in five months is going to be a lot of busy action and you need to really fortify your energy. That's what I'm talking about, like getting more explanation, more reasons why, or different way of delivering the same message you've already received. You just need it in a little different way. Maybe you feel like you need a different energy and a different vibration. And so that would be a great time to get a reading. Now, another great time to get a reading is when you feel like you're not getting anything at all. Now, this comes with a caveat. If you're in a deep place of grief or highly charged emotion, it's probably not the best time to get a reading. The best readings are when your energy can be the most in balance as possible. So whenever you get a reading, please don't do any kind of drugs or alcohol or anything like that. Of course, you got to take your prescription medicines and all that stuff. I'm talking about you want to be in the most balanced place possible because that will give the most accurate results. And that's for many different reasons depending on how the reader connects with your energy and the way that the readers connect with your energy over at Messenger of Spirit is that their spirit guides work with your spirit guides and they give information. But if your energy is really highly charged, your spirit guides are going to be focused on you and your spirit guides might not be giving all the information over to the medium because they feel like you will not be in a receptive place for it. And there are other reasons why as well. So that's one of the things. But when you are developing your own intuition, and I always, always want you to continue to develop your intuition, continue to talk to your spirit guides. But when you feel stuck or you're not getting anything, you can ask yourself some questions. Am I too emotionally attached to the outcome? Am I not in a balanced place right now? Am I emotionally charged? Once you kind of go through those different scenarios and you still come to the conclusion of, I just don't have the answer. Well, it could be that you don't have a spirit guide specifically for what you're looking for, but this would be a great time to get a reading because a medium who does this on a professional basis most likely will. So this would be a good time if you feel like you're not getting a message, then definitely go to a medium. If you're feeling like, huh, you know what? I would really like new insights on this topic. I feel like I have some hunches, I have some feelings, but I would really like to ask some specific questions about this topic, or I just would like to go and see what spirit says, because sometimes we just want validation. So if you're feeling like, you know what, I feel like I have this, but I would just like a little bit more clarity. I would like a little bit more validation and new insights then that's a great time. So if you're curious, this is a fantastic time to just see what spirit has to say. And you don't have to ask specific questions. You can just say, I'd like to know about relationship. I would like to know about X, Y, Z. Those kind of things would be really helpful. So curiosity, just wanting to connect with your loved ones, just wanting to know about different techniques. Those things can be really great when you're wanting to get a reading. Now, how do you choose someone who can give you a reading? Well, word of mouth is, I feel like, such a great way because if you've been talking to a friend and they've had a good experience, it is a great way. Now, that's not a guarantee that that medium is going to be the perfect fit for you, but it's certainly a good way to do it. Also, I would be looking at the energy that you're feeling. So how do you intuitively feel? Sometimes we are just drawn to someone. Now, I like to look at pictures and see what the energy is holding in that picture of someone. So when you go over to messengerspirit.com and you want to book a reading with one of our readers, you can look at the picture and see which reader you feel most drawn to. Some people have a misconception that readings are more accurate in person, and that is not true. In fact, readings can be even more accurate on the phone or on Zoom. And one of the reasons why is because you're not right there in the same room with a person. Sometimes when that happens, the client who's getting the reading can become very guarded, very nervous, and the wall goes up and it can be even harder. 
if the person getting a reading is in their own natural environment, then oftentimes it is a better reading because they are more comfortable and more open to receiving a message. And they also don't have to worry about driving back home. They can just relax and receive the reading. This is all great because it opens up so many opportunities to connect with so many different people all over the world. Now, tips when receiving a reading. I always say to one, talk to your spirit guides and your loved ones in spirit before you get the reading. So just do it out loud, whether you're in the car, whether at your house, just do it out loud if you can. If you can't do it with your intuitive thought, which is basically the intention that your spirit guides and your loved ones hear your want and desire for them to be with you and tell them what you would like to know about and ask them some questions. I always, always say, get some questions ready for your reading because while you can get great messages and oftentimes when you're getting a reading, most of the questions you haven't even asked will be answered. Sometimes you wanna know specific answers or specific questions that Spirit might not have thought was important, but you want to get more clarity on it. One of the tips I will say to never do in a reading, please don't sit there and just say, I need you to prove to me X, Y, Z, or, well, I already asked my spirit guides and my loved ones in spirit the question. So I just want you to channel the answers. Most of the time when you're with a medium, they will provide some sort of evidence in some way, shape, or form that they have actually connected to your energy. And this can be in a small evidential detail, or it can be in a big evidential detail, something like that. But when you come to a reading in a place where you are very skeptical, which I think a healthy skepticism is good, but when it's way too skeptical as far as, well, tell me what my grandmother used to call me as a nickname, those kind of things you are really squinching off your energy and it puts a lot of guard up around you. It can put a guard up around the medium as well and it doesn't lead to an open connection. While your medium still might be able to channel that answer without you even asking, when you're basically trying to prove something, you're not truly being open to the entire reading itself. So being open to that. And the last tip that I'm gonna share here is pay attention to what kind of reading you're signing up for. There are psychic medium readings and there are just intuitive readings and psychic readings. Pay attention to what you're looking for. Whenever I would do readings, I would do psychic medium readings, which means I would have the ability to give you messages from your spirit guides about the past, present, future, which can encompass career, relationship, and other things, and spirit guides, and your loved ones might come through as well. So some readers really work more in the mediumship role of all of those things. Some readers connect mostly with loved ones and spirit who have passed. And some readers will prefer to pull Oracle cards and talk about past, present, future and current life situations. So I think it's really good to have a healthy mix of everything. And so I'd love for you to go over and check out our readers at messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments if you're feeling a call to get a reading. But of course, I want you to develop your intuition always. That is gonna be your guiding light. That is your compass. Your spirit guides talk to you through your intuition. And of course, you can always be part of my program for intuitive languages where I teach you how to do that. And so that's a six week program with a year of support. So we've got the best of both worlds here over at Messenger of Spirit. And I'm going to be back next week with a brand new episode. Thanks for listening today. But until then, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review. And a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerofspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at Messenger of Spirit. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.